What is up ladies and gents, this is going to be the second video in the priest guide series. And this video is going to be about keybinds and macros. And I'm essentially going to talk through uh, the macros that I'm using, uh, the different type of macros I'm using, just generally what I think is, is going to be good and useful for you as a priest. And then I'm going to go through why I've bound in a certain way, why I've, I've located them in a certain position. Uh, and kind of the philosophy that I have behind binding and, and making your character easier to, to pilot in the first place so that you can be uh, a better player in Arena. So I'm going to start off with macros. And I'm not going to go through every macro that I have. If you would like to see all the macros that I have, I will put a link in the description uh, so that you can copy them directly. Uh, instead, I'm going to kind of go over like the theory of them and what they're for a little bit more so you kind of understand why I'm using them and what sort of situation you can use them into. Uh, and I'll, I guess we'll start off with the help arm macro. And generally what you want to do with this is you want to group two spells, a helpful spell and a harmful spell, uh, that either one of them has a cooldown or neither of them have cooldowns. And ideally, they can both have a cast time rather than one with a cast time and one be instant just because it's going to help you, you know, help the get your gameplay flow a little bit more and, and with your brain understanding what that bind is going to be doing and how that's going to affect your character. Obviously, if you uh, if you disagree with this, you want to do it in a different way, obviously it's, it's very much personal preference. It's just the way I like to uh, to set it up. So for example, I have Shadow of Pain and Power Word Shield on the same bind. I have it on one because you s use them in similar ways. You, you know, you try and dot a lot of the enemy team uh, you know, and keep that up. And you try and keep Power Word Shield, or rather Atonement up, via Power Word Shield up on your team in a similar fashion. Uh, so these these binds are very much mirrored uh, with regards to, you know, the help harm uh, ideology, I guess. And so that's why I've grouped them together. Um, you can do the same with Smite and Mend. I've done that. Um, and there's, an, there's a whole host of other... Of a, abilities that you can do this with. Uh, as I said, generally I try to avoid putting things on with massive cooldowns. If you do have something with a cooldown on, you can just show tooltip uh, that ability. If you do use something where both abilities have a cooldown, then I advise putting the button at least somewhere else on you, your UI so you're able to check the cooldown of said ability rather than just only being able to see it when you're targeting a certain person because that can become problematic at times uh, and just cause just gameplay difficulties. Uh, the second type of macro that I want to talk about, which is really good for disc, is the smart cast macro. And essentially what this does is it removes the circle that gets put down when you either barrier or feather or go for a master spell, that sort of thing. Uh, and this will allow you to essentially press the bind and it will instantly cast that ability uh, where your cursor is. And... You can also add a modifier in and do it directly on top of your own player. So if you're really going for a fast dome, you know, a fast pre-dome, you see someone's coming to stun you, you're shit, like shit, 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 I need to dome. This will save any sort of delay with moving your mouse to where your character is. You can just press the bind and it will do it on top of you. Uh, this is going to gonna make it a lot quicker um, and, and a lot more likely that you're going to be able to get the pre-dome off. As I said, Fast Master Spell is also important. Uh, then we've got Feathers. Uh, this is outdated. As I said, this is a BFA guide, but I'm using it just because the macros are mostly the same. Uh, Fortitude. We've got a Fortitude macro, uh, which essentially powered Fortitude yourself always. And the reason this is good is because Powered Fortitude has a really long range. So if you want to rebuff your team um, and you happen to be targeting someone that's really, you know, right the pillar, really far away, whatever. You could just do it on yourself and it will hit them. Uh, so this is handy. This essentially deletes the step of targeting yourself to do it. Um, and in pretty much all situations, this is fine. Next sort of macros that I use are targeting macros. And the reason for using targeting macros is because I bind target arena one to three. I bind target party one and two. Rather than using any sort of mouse overs, uh, I wholeheartedly recommend you do this. It's going to make you a lot faster when targeting an arena and save you time and it may be the difference between saving somebody or not, getting a kill or not. Uh, I wholeheartedly recommend you do this. Don't use mouse overs. If you want to learn 
how to stop using mouse overs on your party and, and focus on using binds on them, I suggest downloading some kind of panel add-on. Um, and you can essentially create an invisible panel and place it over the top of the party frames so that you no longer have an interaction there and you're forced to use the bind. And this way you're going to learn really quickly to use your binds because otherwise people will just instantly die. Um, with regards to party, uh, with regards to arena one to three, you can also do uh, pets and put that on the fourth bind. And the reason for having it in macros and not binding it in the UI is if you bind it in the UI and you're trying to target a hunter, for example, if you press that button twice, it will target the hunter's pet the second time. And it will cycle through the hunter and the pet, the hunter and the pet. So if you're spamming that bind uh, really fast to target them ASAP, and, you know, for example, I use scroll wheel and mouse. If I scroll up and it targets my hunter, it will spam target the hunter and the pet. Uh, and this obviously can cause problems. So in the interest of this not happening, I bind it using macros instead. And the same is for party and the same is for myself. If you have fiend out and you spam target yourself, it will swap to the fiend if you use the interface option. Some people like this, I don't. I prefer doing it with macros, so that's why I have them. Uh, we also have some scripts. Uh, most of these I now have included in an add-on. And um, as I say, my UI, my UI settings are available to subs on my Twitch stream. So if you would like this add-on, uh, feel free to drop by the, the Twitch channel. Um, we have a command for it for more information. Uh, but yeah, these are the scripts if you want to just run them run them on scripts. And you just run these on login. Uh, and there's a few different ones. There's one for nameplates, one to free. There's one to put myself last on the raid frames so that I have my party, my, my teammates as one and two. Because I always have to scroll up and scroll down. So it makes for less brain work if I'm always last. Um... I have some that move target of target slightly and, and the cast bar so that the cast bar doesn't interfere because the, if you have somebody has a lot of buffs and debuffs, the cast bar gets pushed down. So now the cast bar is always in the same place. Uh, I have one that moves the cast bar above my focus and slightly increases the size of it. Um, we have one that hides the griffins, one that hides the arena frames because with Gladius X, they're not hidden by default like they were with S Arena. Uh, and then a couple of, of scripts to to improve quality of life in arena. You know, there's, there's maps where there's a lot of snow, this will remove that. Uh, and then just combat text slightly larger. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, there was one other one that I recently added that wasn't on there, which is the desperate prayer fade macro. Uh, I recently added this and I really like it because we're running fade conduit and desperate prayer conduit. Now fade actually reduces damage taken by approximately 10% for five seconds. Uh, there is essentially no situation where you'll use Desperate Prayer where you'll not want to use the Fade. Uh, if you're using Desperate Prayer, you're either trying to pre-Desperate Prayer a go on yourself. Um, maybe this is like a 10% use case, I would say. Maybe maybe 25% use case. You know, if you're able to do it reliably, it's good. It's a good thing to get in a habit of being able to do. Understanding when they're going to do a go on you and pre-Desperate Prayer it. And obviously having Fade up for that as well is very nice. Um, and then there's coming out of a stun lock when people are doing a go on you or just reaction reactionary using desperate prayer to casters switching to you. Uh, and in this case, you'll want to get your fade off as well. Uh, so I like this macro since they're both off global cooldown and there's no downside to it. So derp that I am managed to render the entire video uh, and then when checking it back, realized I'd missed out a few macros. So uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, cut this in at the end of uh, Past Ryan's macro monologue and uh, quickly go over the last few macros that I miss. So the first one is the death macro. And this is one that I kind of developed with chat a little bit, well, with the help of chat uh, in pre-patch when we first got death back. Essentially what it does is it will death your target if you have one. Uh, assuming that it's an enemy target. If the target is friendly or you don't have anything targeted, then it will death the nearest thing. Uh, so this kind of makes it act a little bit more like premonition. Uh, obviously, you have a target if possible, so you have more control over who it deaths. Uh, otherwise, if, for example, somebody is out of loss of you and is your nearest target, it won't go off. Or if you're targeting someone else and he is out of loss, it also still won't work. 
Um, so you still need to play with a little bit of a brain with it, but it still manages to, you know, it helps you out a little bit in certain situations. Uh, so that's why I'm using it. The next macro that I missed is one of my mind control macros. Uh, and this is, this is a really simple one, but I have a, I have mind control one to three, uh, as macros. And on one or two, I just have exists in it as well. I have this extra portion to it, uh, which essentially what it does is it will mind control my target uh, if I have one. If I don't have a target, it will mind control arena one, two, or three. And yeah, that's pretty much it for macros, I would say. I guess I kind of want to move on to just general bindings now. Uh, and it's more going to be like my philosophy of kind of binding and why I bound in a certain way. Uh, and why the keybinds are located in certain positions rather than me being like, you should bind it to this. This is what you need to do. Because binding is very uh, personal, in my opinion. And what feels comfortable for one person might not feel comfortable for, for, for someone else. You know, people have very different play styles. People have different keyboards. People have different size hands. So it doesn't make sense for everyone to have the same keybinds. So the reason... I guess we'll start off with binding placement. Uh, I think that's a sensible place to start. So what I've generally done, instead of binding everything in a logical place with regards to the binding itself, for example, one to six, one to 10, whatever, you know, what I've done is I've tried to group abilities that are similar in terms of their use in the same sort of area. So I have CC and CC avoidance stuff down here. Obviously PS I can use in CC. So when I check down what I've got, oh no, I'm in the kidney, what can I do? Okay, I can see, I can, I can use my trinket, I can PS, that's my two options. They're right next to each other. I look down, I don't have to look all over the place. I can look down and see them both at once. It's, just, it's, it's a big time saver if you don't have to look all over your UI for different cooldowns. And when I check down here, I might see, you know, all this other stuff. Just by checking Trinket, I'll see all these other cooldowns at the same time, and I'll have a general feel for what's up without having to check multiple things at a different time. It all goes in my brain in one go. So this is why all the defensives are down here. Then we have Dispels here. We have Fear sort of in the middle. Uh, there's not much else really to group it with. We have Fiend as well with it. These, these are kind of like outliers. Uh, my general damage and healing stuff is in the bottom left. And then PI and Dark are my utility cooldowns with as well my games and door as well they're, they're all kind of utility right so they're all sort of in the same same location and and that's pretty much it you know there's all the stuff that i have that's over on the right here is just stuff that i don't actually need to check uh in general or stuff that i don't use very often so like knock and schism obviously don't really warrant a place over here because they don't see massive amounts of use Fade is something that I will generally just press anyway. If shit's going down, if it's up, it's up. If it's not, it's not. It's not something that I'm like, oh crap, oh crap, I've got to, you know, get to the next fade cooldown sort of thing. Because it's a minor bonus and it's off global cooldown, so it doesn't affect your other gameplay that much. Obviously, stuff on the right is all just macros, essentially. Mounts, that sort of thing that doesn't need to be checked regularly. Uh, or if at all. So that's why I've placed them in such a way. And that makes sense to me. I don't see any downsides to it. You know, it maybe takes you like half an hour to sort of figure that out and, and figure out where you want to place things. But other than that, I think it's good practice. So I recommend you follow um, follow a similar, similar ideology with regards to placing stuff. So with regards to actual binding, so I generally want to try and keep, and this is, again, something I try and do with all the classes. I want to try and keep spells that are like regular rotation spells uh, not that I have an actual rotation, but if you if you consider like the rotation of all the abilities that you use in the arena, there'll be spells that you use more and there'll be spells that you use less. The spells that I'm using more in just general play, obviously, are just like shield, penance, mind blast, just normal heals, normal damage. I have it all on one to five, if possible, with also help harm. So I have penance, obviously, offensive defensives on two, purge the wicked and shield on one, mind blast on three. I don't actually have a healing ability for three, but if I did, that would go on three as well. Uh, Prayer of Mending or something, maybe. Uh, Mend and Smite are on four, and then Solace on five. And that makes it really, really easy to just play the game uh, without having to move my hand all over the place. It's really comfortable. It makes your hand less tired. And I wholeheartedly believe if you have bad binds for certain 
abilities, it makes you subconsciously lazy uh, and makes you not want to press that bind in favor of something that's an easier button to push, an easier bind to press. So that's why I feel that binding is so important and it's so important to have binds that are easy to press for the relevant situation. I have a couple of bad binds, I would say, that I would look to improve if possible. I think Fiend is on a bad bind. I have to move my hand a lot to press Fiend. Uh, and I think Radiance actually right now is not on a good bind. And the reason for that is a lot of the time you want to trinket Radiance. If somebody gets really bursted hard, uh, or you get bursted really hard, you want to trinket Radiance. Now that's quite a big hand movement to go from pressing Shift R to pressing B. It's not, not an easy transition. So it would be much nicer if Radiance was up on something higher, at least to R. So that's something I'm going to be looking to improve in the near future. Um, BM Trinket is on Shift Q. Again, that's an easy button to push. If I'm trinketing BM Trinket, uh, Trinket and then BM Trinket, somebody's going on me uh, and I want to reactionary do it to save myself. That's really easy to, to do. They're both on Shift. Same with Desperate Prayer, Shift, Shift D. Same with Meld on Shift D. They're all on really similar, similar binds uh, that I can press after pressing Trinket. Um, and so that's kind of the intent of it, I guess. Um, PS, again, is a cooldown that I need to use fast, but not that often, so it's on G. Um, potentially could swap PS and Radiance around. That's maybe something I could toy with in the future. Um, right now, I'm not intending on, on changing anything, uh, but it's just something that I want to, you know, want to plan for as a potential upgrade if I feel the need or if, if I get to that point, you know. Uh, it has potential. Fear on T. Uh, again, you want to fear fast sometimes. It's not super close like it, like death, for example, which you need to use really fast. Uh, but it's in a place where I can press it quickly if I need to. And this is, this is the balance, right? You need to balance your binds. Uh, you, you need to figure out how much of a priority something is to use it fast and how much you use it often. And I think you want to have comfortable stuff, the stuff you use often, but you also want to be able to have certain cooldowns that you need to use really fast. They need to be on good binds too. Um, and, and that's the kind of balance that you need to find. Um, and I think that we just about can do that on Priest, on, on Disc Priest right now. We got a bunch of new stuff in the, the recent expansion in Shadowlands. Um, that made it a little bit harder, but I think we can just about still do it uh, while having while having comfortable binds. Um, and one thing I would potentially recommend if you're not using, you know, an, an MMO mouse, which you'll have no problem problem making binds if you do have one of those. I personally don't like it. If you have a regular mouse, what you can do is bind a modifier to one of the side buttons on your mouse, like Control, for example, and then that unlocks basically every other bind without having to press a modifier to do it. And that's going to be basically double the binds for you. So that's something, again, maybe I'll toy with it in the future. It's a quite a big change to do. Um, but if you are just first starting out on a class, that's potentially something that you can look into. Um, and I would say that is worth it. Uh, other binds are obviously Arena 1 to 3 and Target Party 1, 2 and Self. And I have Target Party 1 and 2 on Scroll Up, Scroll Down. Uh, I've had it like this since Wrath of Lich King. It's really fast, really comfortable. Uh, you need to keep in mind that targeting people is off global. It's off the global cooldown. You can target someone anytime. It doesn't matter if you're on global cooldown, right? So having targeting binds on stuff that you can do on your other hand essentially means that you're going to be fa a faster player overall. You know, you can do two things at once. You have two hands. You need to take advantage of that. Same goes for off global spells. Grip is off the global, so I have grip on mouse button, I think it's one. Unfortunately, Rapture is no longer off global. When I bound Rapture to side button on mouse, uh, this was button mouse button two, I think. Um, it was off the global, and I just haven't changed it since. Um, potentially, that's something, again, for me to, to look into doing. Um, but for now, I'm happy with it. Uh... Lastly, I guess what I want to talk about is Arena 1 to 3 binds. Now, you want to target Arena 1 to 3 with key bindings rather than clicking them in game. It will be faster. It takes some getting used to, but if you have the script that shows the number above the enemy's head, then it will be a lot easier for you to do. And 
I would suggest you either go with something on your mouse to target Arena 1 to 3. Uh, you want to go with F1, F2, F3. Or you want to go with something like ASD. Maybe Shift 1, 2, 3. Something like that. Something that's easy to press. Something that logically makes sense. And um, something that's going to be fast. You know, you need to find that balance uh, so that it works... You know, and fits in your brain, but also is fast for your hands, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. All right, boys, that was the second part to my guide. Uh, the third part will be coming up real soon, and that will be on UI and add-ons. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If there was anything that you think I missed, any macros that you think would be useful, please do let me know in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.